Hey, this is some guy named Chris, and today I want to talk about GPT-4, Code Interpreter, and how we can potentially utilize it to help us with Power BI. I know when I get a new data set from a client, I, I know how to model it, I know how to look at the data and analyze it, but some of the analysis I don't see right away. Um, I also try to think about what graphs would be helpful to the client, what charts. Um, one of the things I've learned is asking a client, what do you want to see, doesn't help. Providing examples, providing some insights, gets their minds working, and they can provide very valuable feedback. So I want to show you today using Code Interpreter, what kind of feedback we can potentially, or what kind of information we can potentially use to start the data uh, analysis. Not to completely do it, but to start it so that we can get a leg up and use it a little more quickly. So what I'm gonna do is share my screen and show you guys ChatGPT4. And by the way, I just recorded this video without sharing my screen, so this should go much better. Um, what we're gonna do is if you have ChatGPT Plus, underneath settings, beta, beta features, turn on code interpreter. Once you turn it on here, you then have to hover over GPT-4 and make sure code interpreter is checked. If you check default, you'll notice plus goes away down here and a plus comes back. This plus is for uploading a file. So now that we can upload the file, what I'm going to do is select a file. Now this is just general census data. There's a hundred records in here. Uh, it is actually generated from ChatGPT4. So realize, note, I'm aware, let's not utilize sensitive data, corporate data, whatever it may be. Uh, if you can generalize your data, utilize it. But remember, this data is being uploaded, so be careful. Once we have this file uploaded, I am going to request, please analyze the data in the file and provide some graphs and charts. I don't know why I always say please, but so first thing it's going to do is analyze. It's going to download that file or it's already uploaded. It's going to open the file, read it. Now my file has Excel data, that's it, but it doesn't, it's not in a table but it's reading it out real nice. It's in a, not in a true table, it's in a formatted table. Or not, it's not in a formatted table, but it's in just a regular table. But as you can see, based on just reading the data, it knows these seven columns and is providing some insights on what someone may want to look at. So distribution of age, gender distribution, occupation, income, and average. So once it's generated, now all of a sudden it's generating graphs and providing some feedback, there's a noticeable peak around age 30. Um, why I picked up 30 and not the one around 50? Not sure, but this information, just by throwing out these graphs, I no longer have to pull it into Power BI and throw some graphs out there and start looking. I can actually take these, supply them to my customer if I needed to, and say, hey, what are these? These are some examples of what we're seeing in your data. Do you like these or don't you? Are these, are these helpful? I think by doing something like this, I now have a leg up and more quickly can allow the customer to see what are the opportunities and potentials with the with Power BI and their data? One of the other things, and we'll let this throw, and I'm really liking these graphs because the last couple of times I've done this, it's actually spit out the, the, the model, or sorry, I say the schema, and I've had to ask for the graphs. But in this case, it's really giving me the graphs right away. Um, if it doesn't give you the graphs right away, just ask for them. It'll, spit, it'll try to get you the graphs. So some of the other things that I have looked at doing in the same data set, 
is helping me devise a way to increase the efficiency of building Power BI data models. So with the code interpreter, now that it can read in the file, I created this one back uh, last time, or not last time, but a little bit ago, and it doesn't work anymore. So let's do this. One. Come back here and we're going to say, create a data model. So giving a little bit of information, um, as you know, it likes to tell you more than you want sometimes, but if you obviously it's telling us we need tables, relationships, columns, measures, et cetera. So this is what I'm thinking. This is where I wanted to see it. Okay, calculated groups or columns, sorry, measures. So no DAX. You tell me the best dimensions and fact tables. So So I like the, uh, even up here, the measures, I like the average income and the total income on the counts. But here, this is where it can help us. So not only has it given us graph examples, it's giving us some ca calculated columns and measures that it might use. And now by asking for the dimensions, it's giving us the dimensions that we would want to put on our table. So I think this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to start utilizing it for my client data um, as long as it's generalized. Again, not uh, sensitive data, but if it's generalized data, I, I'm going to be utilizing this just to see what it comes up with for examples. But let me know what you guys think. I think this is pretty cool. Us being able to upload the files, which just FYI, we can also upload Word documents, PDFs, images, and have it analyze those. But I'm thinking more for Power BI, where we have true data sets that may be denormalized. We want to normalize them. What's the best way? What's What can we look at? Getting this out to our clients or even internally um, to our staff. Hopefully, uh, you guys utilize this. Give me some details below. Let me know. What do you think? Does this help you? Does it not? Um, what are you guys thinking of uh, doing next? I've got some ideas. Uh, I might go wrong that and see what I can do, but let me know what you guys think. But this has been some guy named Chris. Have a great day.